Okay, Hammy here. Um, this next video here, we're going to begin chapter two, which is about the nature of matter. Uh, so we get a little bit technical with this chapter with atoms and molecules, but hopefully we can build it up uh, to some of the organic molecules that uh, are important and we'll use throughout the, uh, the rest of our Biology 1 course. I split this first section into two sections. Uh, the first section here is going to be on atoms and in the next short video then we'll talk a little bit more about how atoms can chemically bond with each other to make bigger things, make molecules, macromolecules and, and that sort of thing. Okay so the the first question then becomes what, what atoms and molecules are things we can't see. You know what what are we made up of? The little schematic over here you know, we start with the biosphere, this whole, the earth, everything living as we know it. And we go down to ecosystems, down to community. You've probably done these levels of organizations before. A community is made up of all the living things in the area. And then we go down just to a population, just the wolves themselves, uh, down to the organism. The organism is then made up of different systems. Digestive, here they're showing skeletal, uh, muscle, nervous, endocrine, um, down to individual organs. Okay, a bone would be an organ in the skeletal system. Down to tissues, groups of cells working together. Uh, down to the, the cell level, all the way, you know, we go all the way down. What is uh, the, the smallest part that makes us up? Um, back in ancient Greece, when we had the, the ancient thinkers that thata, sat around with their togas and their laurel wreaths, and they, they tried to, you know, break a stick in half, and then break it in half again, and again, and again. And how many times can you break that stick in half and still have a stick? Uh, that kind of idea. Well, they came up with this term, atom. Okay? It comes from the, the Greek for atomos, which means indivisible indivisible. So you get down to the smallest part where you can't divide it any further. The, and we call that now just an atom. And you've heard this before, the smallest basic unit of matter to still have properties of that particular type of matter. Um, and what is matter? Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. So basically everything around us except for energy. Uh, light, heat, sound, those kind of things are energy and not matter. Okay, so as living things we are made up of matter. Now what are these atoms made up of? Okay, uh, In chemistry you'll go into more detail just for our biology one course. Uh, we're going to look at what John Dalton proposed, what we call a planetary model of the atom. So you have in our solar system you have your sun in the center and then the planets that are sort of circling around that sun and you, we have this little uh, planetary system based on the sun. Uh, if you look at the planetary uh, model of a carbon atom over here, uh, you'll see kind of a similar idea. Now what particles do we find in an atom? In the very center, what we call the nucleus, there are two particles. Okay? There are protons and neutrons. Now carbon, ten, carbon, the carbon atom has six protons and six neutrons. Protons are the blue ones here and if you notice protons have a plus in them. Okay, I always remember protons are positive. Okay, so protons have a positive charge. We often write, that, write it as P plus. Okay. They are located in the nucleus, and neutrons are neutral. We usually just abbreviate them with a little n. So protons positive, neutrons neutral. Okay. Now, the, the last column you have in your notes, it talks about mass. Notice how much bigger they made the proton and the neutron than these little green electrons here. Uh, we could, they do have a mass, uh, we could give that unit in grams, but they're so teeny tiny that scientists, chemists have actually come up with their own unit called an atomic mass unit, or we say they weigh 1 a 
mu, one atomic mass unit. And protons and neutrons are about the same size, and so neutrons are also going to be one amu, one atomic mass unit. Okay, And then spinning around the nucleus are these little negatively charged particles called electrons. We usually abbreviate electrons as E negative. And electrons are so teeny tiny, they're about like one one thousandth of an AMU. And when we're determining the mass of an atom, we often say they're negligible. We can neglect them or ignore their mass, okay, for the purposes, especially in biology and what, what, how we work with atoms, okay? Now you'll notice that the number in the carbon atom here and in all atoms, that the number of positive protons, okay, the blue ones, there are six of them. There are how many green negative electrons here, okay? One two, three, four, five, six. Okay, there are six. There are six negative electrons in what we call these outer energy levels. Okay, so if you have six positive charges and six negative electrons, your atoms are going to be electrically neutral. The positives, okay, the positives and the negatives will equal out. The proton number and the electron, the number of protons and number of electrons will equal out, making the atom electrically neutral. Now, we, all the atoms that we know of, uh, Dmitry Mendeleev was playing uh, sort of a chem chemical solitaire, the, the story goes on a train in Russia, and he, he stumbled across some properties and he figured out a way to put all our atoms and elements into what we call the periodic table of elements, or oftentimes just periodic table. Uh, why periodic? Periodic is something that happens every so often. Uh, when you get into chemistry, you'll soon learn that when we look at the different groups and families, the columns, the rows, a lot of the a lot of the atoms or elements in the same column will share very similar properties. Okay, in in biology, we'll use kind of the first ten here. If we look at our carbon example again, you'll see that this chemical symbol is right in the center. Okay, so for carbon. That is just a plain C. It's the first letter. And then some atoms, nitrogen over here, um, oxygen, fluorine, they're all just the first letter. Sometimes neon or helium, it's the first two letters. Uh, some are, you know, zinc, Zn, there's a Z and an N in there. Uh, some of them are not real obvious. Uh, for example, iron. Where do they get Fe for iron? Well, it comes from ferrous or ferrum. Okay, from the Latin and Greek okay, for, for iron. So sometimes they come from Latin and Greek. Uh, sometimes uh, they come from where they were found, Francium. Uh, they might be named Einsteinium or Lorentzium, maybe named after a famous scientist or, or somebody that's uh, discovered the element where the element was discovered. Okay, so that's where the symbols come from. Above the chemical symbol, you'll have the atomic number. Okay, the atomic number on your notes, I want you to write, equals the number of protons. The number of protons. Okay, that the number of protons is what makes an element an element. Six protons makes that atom carbon. If, if one of those protons were taken away, if we could, now we would be down to five protons and it would be boron. Okay? If it has five protons, it's boron. If it has six protons, it's carbon. If we add another proton, if we could, now it would be nitrogen. The proton, the number of protons determines what element, what atom it is. And so we can just list them from one proton all the way up here to 108, 118 protons. Okay, Down below the name or the symbol sometimes 
and different periodic tables will give you um, more or less information. This will be a very basic one like we will use in class. Is the atomic mass or the atomic weight? Now if you remember back to the previous slide, what did we say has a mass in an atom? Both found in the nucleus? Right, the protons and the neutrons. So in your notes, please write the atomic mass or weight equals the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. We said electrons are negligible for mass. We can ignore them. So the mass, we remember we said carbon has six protons, six neutrons, so that's going to give it a mass of 12 AMU. Okay? Now it's not always, the, they're all, not always the same. For example, if you look over here at sodium, sodium has an atomic number of 11, so it's going to have 11 protons and it has a mass of 23. So if you take 23 minus 11, that leaves us with 12 neutrons. So sodium has 11 protons and 12 neutrons. So there's, and there are other examples of where the proton neutron number is not always the same. Okay, but remember because protons are positive, that's why they put up here it will also equal the number of electrons. So you can use atomic number to get the proton number or the electron number to get the number of neutrons. You take the mass minus the number of protons and that leaves you with the number of neutrons. Uh, the, the number, when we talk biology and elements, okay, elements, atoms, we kind of use interchangeably. Uh, when we talk about an alum, element, it's, it's a pile of stuff that's all the same type of atom. So one element consists of one type of atom. Uh, naturally occurring in our Earth, our biosphere, there are 92 naturally occurring. A lot of the others are made in laboratories and, and things like that. So that only 92 do we find sort of around us. We can even narrow that down even further into schnapps. Okay, schnapps. Okay, schnapps. As, as humans, we are 98 percent C-H-N-O-P-N-S, okay? Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, okay? These four right here are big ones. Uh, we use them for carbohydrates. We use them for lipids. We use them for amino acids, which build proteins, and also for nucleic acids, which we'll get to later this chapter, your DNAs and your RNAs. And along with that, uh, you'll see over here, P stands for phosphorus. Okay, that's a major atom we find in DNA and RNA. And then the S stands for sulfur, which is an important element found in amino acids, which then we said make up proteins. So if you kind of think of what you're built of, of, of sugars and fats and DNA, RNA, proteins, I mean, that's who you are. That's who you're made up of. Most of those atoms, okay, 98% of them, those atoms in us are going to be these six right here, okay? Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Okay, last thing I want to talk about this section is about isotopes. Uh, some atoms of some, some of the elements around us um, have different numbers of neutrons. Okay, we call that an isotope. So normally carbon had six protons and six neutrons, which gave it a mass of 12, right? And that's what we saw in the periodic table. Uh, if you look at the periodic tables uh, on, your, on your phone or tablet uh, or the ones we hand out in class, you might notice that it says 12.011. Well, that's not a whole number. Where does that come from? Well, that's the average atomic mass of all the carbon atoms um, in our universe. Why is that? Not all of them have a mass of 12. Some have six protons and seven neutrons, okay, which gives them a mass of six plus seven, 13. Some carbon atoms have six protons and eight neutrons and have a mass of 
carbon-14. Okay, we call these isotopes. They're all carbon atoms because they have six protons. Remember, proton number is what makes that, that element an element, that atom an atom. But the neutron number can be different. Some of these isotopes are radioactive, which means their nuclei break down over time and they slowly give off radiation. Uh, in the biological field, we use these for a lot of different things. So on your notes where it says uses, where it says uses, I'll list these things right here. Okay, first of all, uh, we use them in, very importantly, smoke detectors. Uh, I didn't realize that till recently, but a, a pretty valuable device and it has saved a whole lot of life. So number one, um, smoke detectors. Uh, number two, we talked about down here. Number two, we talked about uh, last chapter was radioactive dating. Radio active. I'm sorry, my writing is really bad. Uh, radioactive dating. Uh, when we were studying evolution, how did we know how old some rocks and fossils were? Uh, the nuclei break down over time if we know their half-lives. Uh, we can see how much of that uh, isotope is left and we can determine how old different layers of rock and fossils are. Uh, use number three. Uh, use number three up here with the strawberry would be to would be to irradiate I R R A D I A T E. Okay, irradiate food. Okay, irradiation uh, kills the bacteria and the germs and stuff on our food. Uh, they often do this with our canned goods and other things like that to preserve them, gives them a longer shelf life. Uh, kills stuff that when we eat that canned food uh, that might make us sick. That's why they say always uh, not to use if the seal has been broken, okay, because they irradiate the food, kill all the germs. If that seal breaks, then there might be germs that have gotten in there. Okay? So we use it to, you know, keep our food supply clean. Uh, use number four down here uh, is to use isotopes as chemical tracers, okay? chemical tracers. Okay, so there are different uh, instances like barium and um, that we can look at the GI tract. Uh, this is showing a PET scan. Okay, a PET scan uh, where they can you know use these isotopes in a machine that will read that radioactivity given off okay, to to look at our bodies and give us images uh, and give us pictures to find out what's going wrong. Uh, number five, okay, would be as detection of disease. Whoop, if I can spell detection. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry today. Uh, detection of disease. Okay, here's an image of the brain. Okay, a positron image where they're showing you know, what areas of the brain, and so they can detect things. Uh, iodine is a big one. You may have heard of someone getting their thyroid checked. Uh, they and um, finally, uh, number six, uh, we can actually use them to treat some diseases such as, for example, cancer. Uh, we have found it kills fast-growing cells, and you may have heard some uh, relative or somebody you know that had cancer and they went in for radiation or chemotherapy. Uh, we found that some of this radioactivity can actually help reduce tumors and kind of take out those fast-growing cells, uh, the cancer cells that are growing out of control. Okay, so I hope uh, this first section helps sort of give an, um, a little background to what we're made up of and how we can use some of these, uh, the periodic table and some of these elements, atoms, isot you know, and their isotopes um, in the biological field. In the next section now we'll get into how they start combining together to make even bigger, bigger, bigger molecules. Thank you.